Valerie, we'll put yours in. If you're ready, we'll put yours in with all of the approved reports from all of the county departments. I need to bring the paper time. Okay. Well, we'll be in executive session for a while, so if you want to bring it afterwards, then we'll reconvene and we all can sign it because you got it all to us this morning. We can go from there. Excuse me, may I address the court? You bet, you may. Yes, I'd like to request that the incident happen on October 19th that uh, the Glen Rose Power Off be added to the agenda for public uh, discussion. It is in here for executive session where all of y'all can speak in executive session. Will that be an open meeting? It, it can be if you so desire and the court so desires and everybody wants to speak in public, then we can just do it all in public if, if y'all are good and y'all want to. It's a, it's really up to the court. Appreciate it. And we were almost to that. We wasn't quite to that just yet, but we're almost right. to that. So bear with me just a moment, all right? All right. All right. So you had all your other uh, reports presented to you. Anything else? You'll bring the signature sheet afterwards. All right. Do I have a motion to accept the uh, reports from all of the county departments? I'll make that. I have a motion by Richard. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Jeff. Any further questions or comments? <coughs> All in favor said motion. That's five, four, zero against. <coughs> How you doing, Trey? Good. That's good. Eddie's been in here with us. <coughs> So, does the court want to handle all of this in open court? Which is fine. We just make a motion to do so. What they've asked, if we bring it out of executive session, just do it in open court. That's what they've asked. So, I have to you guys. Yeah, if the court wants to make a motion to do that, then we have a second. We move forward. I believe that's Sabrina. Is that correct? How are you doing? I, I'm about to figure out these people's names almost. All right. So, do we have a motion to bring executive session out of executive session into open session? I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. I have a second by Richard. Any further questions or comments? Will we still have an executive session to discuss some other matters? Oh, uh, we can. We can go in executive yeah, session right, right. discuss on personnel matters. Yes. That's what you so desire. I would. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. So we we'll listen to everything. Then we Correct. go in executive session. We'll have Haley in there, yes. and we we'll go for that end of it. First, thank you, sir. Okay. Any further questions or comments? All in favor said motion. That's five, four, zero against. And we were going to do this in executive session anyhow, so we'll go down some ground rules. I apologize. I don't know how many different groups we have here, okay? Each group has a maximum of 30 minutes. You know, you can have each person speak three minutes each, up to 10 people. You can have one person speak 30 minutes. You can have six people speak five minutes. It doesn't matter. I know we have one group that's associated with the powwow. I know we have. One group that's associated with Rocket, uh, Linda, I apologize. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I just don't know if you want to speak three minutes, five minutes, or if you want to speak at all, you just want to listen. And sorry, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. All right. So whenever the group starts, I start the timer. All as I ask is everybody be respectful of each other. That must be Aaron. That is. That's a big guy's looking up at that night, and I'm going, oh, Lord. Yeah, okay. So, whoever wants to start first. Hey, Aaron, I'll go with the deal again, okay? I think we've got two groups here, I think. Each group gets 30 minutes, okay? Uh, like I was just telling them. It can be 10 three-minute speakers, six five-minute speakers, one 30-minute speakers. It don't matter. But when we get to 30 minutes, whichever group is speaking, that ends, we move on to the next group. And I apologize. Do we have more than two groups here? Okay, I know we've got Rocket, and I know we've got the Powwow. All right, so who wants to go first? I'll start the timer, and y'all go for it. And if you will, just state your name, who you are, who you represent, and go from there. My name is Vic Castillo, Vic Whitehall Castillo. I'm the uh, organizer for the Powwow, not the for, for the whole event, but for the Powwow. 
I think uh, what I want to say is uh, there's a lot of incidents that happened in the background before the incident that happened at Powell. I don't think the court needs to listen to all that, all the whys and ifs, and you did it, you did whatever. I think what we need to stick to is just the incident at the powwow. That's the main issue. Okay. So again, with the, I appreciate everybody showing up and everything, but like Danny said, we're, we're on a time crunch right now. So I think if we just stick to the issue at hand that happened at the powwow, that's, that's the important thing. That's what we're here for. Okay. So basically, um, what happened from my perspective, of course, I'm running around doing everything in a powwow, uh, making sure everything was going good. Uh, the issue of alcohol sales came up, uh, which was outside. I personally went out there and talked to the bartender and said, why? Just asked the questions why he was setting up and being everything. He said, well, I don't, I don't know. That's what I was told to do, which was fine. I, I actually asked the bartender at that point in time do me the favor if you have to sell alcohol and you're going to sell alcohol nobody with alcohol gets in through those bay doors nobody goes into my event the powwow can you do that for me he said yeah no problem so any alcohol that he sold he was to tell that well if you buy an alcohol I can, you know you can't go into my event that was at that point in time which is about around 15 30. yeah around 15 30. I'm, I'm sorry 17 30. Uh, 530 <laughs> 530 for you so at that point in time I went back inside to make sure that everything was going good and everything else then I get another call I said Vic they're still selling our call go back out there I went back out there and when I when I approached the bar the bartender it was uh, a lady but I don't know her la full last name but Q uh, the bartender a couple other people were talking about everything I walked up that was talking and Q was trying to decide who said to stop well nobody said to stop what, what we wanted what we was attempting to do is just postpone the sales for a period of time until we could get done uh, so the question was well when are you going to get done uh, according to the flyer and out of the gate I was given a time frame from 10 to 8 when we started the powwow I went to my MC and I said look the turnover for the concert is too short. Let's back it off an hour. So we had already decided to back it off to 7, um, to end the powwow at 7, so they can do what they were going to do and move on. Uh, somewhere along the line, of course, the alcohol incident came aboard and everything else. So when I walked out there, I was talking to my MC, and I said, can we back it off again? So, I don't know. we got things. There's things that we have to try to uh, uh, schedule of events that we have to try to meet you know to do the powwow thing um at that point in time when i went back out there the second time talked to q q turned and looked at me and said vic when are you going to be done i said i'll finish this out at six o'clock at six uh 1800 so six o'clock she said okay at that point in time i turned around went back inside to go to the, my mc and actually try to see well we can we don't have to do that one we don't have to do that you know try to make sure that i was going to meet that 1800 six o'clock time frame so again we backed off an hour at the beginning now we backed it off another hour from the original time frame that i had was allotted which was okay everybody was in agreement i thought i was in agreement me and q and i were in agreement so we was going to shut it off at uh six uh eight six o'clock uh we're only talking about ladies and gentlemen a 30 minute window <laughs> that's it 30 minute windows when everything happened we had a great event it was going smooth everything up until that last 30 minutes uh while i was back inside do not know what happened out there whatever the case may be but uh my mc and i were out at the table trying to figure out what we can skip over what we can uh, delete in order to make that 1800 uh time frame six o'clock time frame um at that point in time a young lady came up walk through this dance circle which you don't, I don't know natives know that's a sacred circle it's been blessed you don't do that walked across the uh, the circle uh, spouting off all kinds of remarks and you know uh, curse words and everything S stepped up to the uh, table where my MC was at and started just hollering and everything and you know f-bombs left and right we just told her stop stop 
Let us do what we need to do to close this thing out. Stop, stop, stop. And then she walked away. Um, at that point in time, the MC said, last two songs so we can shut this down. We're out of here. Now, I will tell you, the MC did come across the mic and said, when we get out of here, where everybody's break, breaking down, get out of here, let's go out. Uh, let them know how you feel about that. Probably shouldn't have said that, but that's exactly what he said. Other than that, everything from that point on, from my perspective, everybody was shutting down. We was getting out of there, and all was good. That, in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, what happened from, like I said, from my perspective, as far as fights, riots, or anything like that, I have no clue. I don't believe any of that happened. Uh, but in a nutshell, that's that's the gist of uh, the incident at the powwow. 30-minute window, one individual, that was it. So, again, that's all I could say. I mean, um, I understand that there was uh, body cams that were... Uh, actually requested and actually was put online i didn't request anything i just like i said i have nothing to hide we did nothing i it's out there if everybody viewed it it shows there was not even the deputies that were there were like we come for a riot where's the riot there was no riot uh one deputy on his body cam said okay well where's the fight there was no fight there was no riot there was no fight i said and i actually approached one of the deputies and asked did you have to escort people out? No. We're here. We're just here. So none of that happened. But like I said, the disrespect that was done to the powwow itself, the disrespect to was done to the dance circle, disrespect to was done to my elders. You guys would be considered elders. It'd be like if I came up and just started cursing at y'all right here, right now. My elders had to witness that disrespect that was done to my MC, disrespect that was done to me, the disrespect that was done to the entire Native community. So that's what I want you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to understand that that's what happened in a nutshell. Again, 30-minute window. None of that other stuff happened that I know of because I was running around doing what I was doing. In a nutshell, that's it. Pretty plain and simple and cut and dry. And that, in a nutshell, that's what it was all about. So that's all I got to say. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. You, when, when all this started, I'm just trying to get my yes, sir. frame in my head. When you went to the bartender first and asked to, to hold off on the alcohol sales, what time was that? That was around... Um, 5.30. That's, you, you said 30-minute window, so I assume. Yes, so five, I that was 5.30. I wanted to clarify. Thank you. Yeah. And um, am I still on my 30-minute time frame? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all still got Anybody else want to come? Anybody else want to come? Whoever wants to speak. And then Sabrina and that group, they'll have their 30 minutes. And then Kelly, I guess you probably would like to wrap it up. I guess. I don't know. Okay. I've only got a couple of things I'd like to say, basically to clarify. Uh, the American uh, Indian Religious Act uh, came into effect uh, August 11, 1978, giving us back our freedom of religion. <clears throat> Up until that time, all our ceremonies had to be done underground. Okay, I was 32 years old when that came in. I just wanted to go over the uh, the ordinances concerning alcohol. Texas State Law 114.05 says unlawful 300 feet from church, public, or private school or hospital. And that's pretty standard everywhere. There might be some confusion on church, all right? Um, we do not have a church per se building our church is out there uh, we could be in a park we could be out the woods where it might be the definition of church comes from the Greek word term 
I can't pronounce it. E E K K L E S I A, which is the biblical word, and is used in the New Testament to identify the community of believers, literally meaning the assembly, congregation, or meeting. Matthew's uh, 16, 18, Acts 5, 11, Romans 16, 5. In the Old Testament, it is a similar uh, meaning referring to experiences, <clears throat> the day of assembly, the Lord's congregation, or, meet, or meeting before the Lord, Deuteronomy 9, 11, 18, 6. I bring this up just to clarify that what we do and how we practice is not oppressive. This comes from way back when. The term church, traditionally now, is a building. But originally it never was. We are still in that, our old ways. That when we gather, and the first prayer, first tobacco laid on the ground, that is sacred ground for our ceremonies. And that's why, <laughs> excuse me, I'm still a little upset because I don't have to tell you how you would feel. I'm sure you know. The degree of disrespect was totally uncalled for. Totally. We tried working with the people. It would have been easily resolved if they would have said, okay, yeah, that's cool. Their function was going to happen for another three hours. The band was setting up, putting their speakers up. Everything was good. They just... Now, I take back the day. One individual decided that this was inappropriate for them to be told not to do that and just totally went haywire. I witnessed it from outside of the arena. I had just finished uh, recording the crown dancers and putting it on social media for our family, friends, and community that weren't there to be able to see it. But the F-bombs and right in our elders' face and everything just was really something I haven't seen in all the years I've gone to Final House. So my statement is pretty much just seeing what she said and what happened. Uh, Vic got a better picture of everything because he was moving all around. I was a vendor and I was taking videos throughout the day so I just wanted to let you know that we don't expect a witch hunt or we don't expect somebody to be drawn and quartered but I do expect the individuals that were involved in this be brought in and the appropriate action taken that is all and I don't think that request is uh, above and beyond. So, thank you. I'm sorry, sir. Can you tell them your name? I apologize. I'm sorry. My name is George Cordero. Sorry, just so they can get it down there. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, my name is Julie Hale. I was a vendor coordinator for the uh, Pow Wow event. And um, I was at the crux of a lot of the issues that happened on the stage, and the name hasn't been brought up yet. Am I okay with saying the name of the individual that we've been talking about? Okay. Um, Cindy Gray was, um, was there during the Pow Wow event. Um, I had received a heated phone call um, from Sabrina Renteria. She's here about 5.45, um, telling me that a riot had been reported at the powwow. Um, at that point, Vic and I were actually both on stage together with EMC, working to get things shut down and, and quieted and get our people out the door. You know, the, the, police were, the police were there. We needed, to get, we needed to get our elders out at that point in time. Um, it was about 5.45, because I have phone records for that that shows when we when I spoke with Sabrina. So it was shortly after that that Cindy um, approached the stage. Um, she could be heard all over the, the powwow space screaming obscenities at that point in time. Um, she continued her outburst, walking through the dance circle as well. Um, she was defending the right of the venue to serve alcohol and to have alcohol in any location 
of of that venue space. Um, that was one of her biggest biggest issues. Um, her use of the f bomb was uh, free, loud, screamed in front of our elders, our MC. We had our children there. Um, I know that several of my people quickly escorted their children out, including the MC. He had his wife and children there as well. He left with his children, and as you know, he came back later. Um, we repeatedly asked Cindy to stop and walk away, and she wouldn't, or she couldn't. I don't know what the issue was, but she just couldn't contain uh, what she had to say about what was going on. Um, I, have you had the opportunity, if any of you, you had the opportunity to view the body, body cam footage from the sheriff's department deputies? Yeah, okay. Um, there were many erroneous statements made in those body cam footages. Um, one being specifically Ms. Gray said that our MC had told people to break bottle and take it to the necks of the bartenders. I was standing right beside the MC. He, that was not said. Um, additionally, Judge, um, in, and I want to address this to, to you, Mr. Chambers, specifically. Um, in that video, and I, I, you and I have had discussions about professional behavior in, in the past. In that video, Ms. Gray pops both hands up on the rail and pops two middle fingers right in the middle of your face. And you turn away laughing and you say, this is what I have to deal with. You guys see what I have to deal with? And I'm just going to end my statement with saying this. If you are a professional, you don't have to deal with that. That is not something you should have to deal with. That is not behavior that should be excused by anybody, especially in, in uh, I don't know if you're her superior. I don't know what the chain of command is. But that's not professional behavior, and that is not behavior that should be accept accepted by anyone. I defend in her or me. It takes three of us to make a decision. Understood. Understood. Any questions? In the uh, in the body cams, there made there was made reference to uh, who was at fault, and uh, there was one name that kept coming up, and that was Kelly Harris. I'm here to tell you, Carly Harris had nothing to do with it. She wasn't involved with it. She had nothing to do with it. As a matter of fact, she's the one that actually contracted out to an entity to make this whole event happen. That's about the extent of her. So she has nothing to do with it. You know, as a matter of fact, she probably needs to have some kudos thrown her way because it was a good planned event. Uh, had it had we followed the timeline that we had agreed. And everything had we followed the protocol that we had agreed because uh, at one point in time uh, we was told that there was going to be signage there was going to be a security they sent the security home there was no signage no alcohol no no I mean none of that happened so I think again just speaking up for uh, Miss Harris she had nothing to do with it she did her job she did it well and everything else so I just want to make sure that that is stated that Kelly Harris had nothing to do with it. She did what she was supposed to do, and that was the end of that. However, it is what it is. Like I said, I have nothing more to add. I mean, it. like I said, I'm trying to just stick to the issue at hand. 30-minute window at the powwow, do's, don'ts, what they did, they, they did, they didn't do whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, but you guys got the body, uh, body cam footage. I don't know if you got the 911 call uh, because – the deputy sheriffs came up there. It was waiting for a riot. And here I was with a spear in my hand. It's like, where's the riot? What, what, what's going on? I mean, it was, it was not pretty. I was like, ooh, I probably shouldn't have had this. There you go. But it, it was, I mean, in a nutshell, like I said, 30 minute window, isolated incident, one individual. That's it. Thank you. Hey, Big Sir, can I ask you a question real quick? Yes, sir. Is, is Tabitha Paulson here. back here? Is she? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, just want to make sure. Yeah, I'm coming. Oh, that's She's okay. All right. Tabitha, just give you a heads up. Y'all are down to 10 minutes. So it's up. You. However, you, and if somebody wants to go behind her, you might just want, I don't know how y'all want to handle it. First, I want to say thank you for your time and allowing us the opportunity to speak. Um, I want to start off by saying that. I have attended powwow, sweat, fire walk, and many other sacred practices before I could ever walk. I'm 46 years old. 
my dad just explained to you that the uh, Freedom of Religion Act didn't go into play until 1978 to give us our, pra our religious practices back. I was born in December of 1977. I am the first generation that is allowed to practice our allowed to practice our ceremonies freely. So when I say to you that this situation broke my heart, I need you to understand it did. It did because my family and my elders and their elders and our ancestors had to hide for many years to be able to have and for them to afford me the opportunity and my kids and my grandkids and so on and so on. I want I want that very clear. I had planned on coming and telling you about some penal codes and how disorderly conduct and I don't think I need to address that. I think we're all smart enough to know that you don't you don't go into public cursing and screaming at people. It's not acceptable. But when you go into a sacred ceremony and you go through the middle of our sacred practices and you are screaming and cursing at an elder, it is disgusting. So um, I, like, I like to talk for just a second about respect and why respect is such a big deal in our culture and uh, Bear with me a second, I'm trying to gather myself. So we, na Native people, um, we believe that Creator, or who you call God, speaks through our elders, and they serve as mentors and leaders and pass on knowledge and wisdom to the younger generation. And I could go on and on and on about how important our elders are to us. But the one thing that is the most important to us is that if it weren't for them, we would have lost our way. And for that to be disrespected at the level that Cindy Gray decided to behave that day, I, I don't see how any of the citizens of Glen Rose or any of the citizens of Somerville County or any native person would ever be okay with that. So I'm here to speak for those three groups, those three groups because it's your city that looks horrible and it's your county that looks ridiculous because of one person's behavior, because of the actions of one person who could not control herself. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna say one more thing and then I'll be done. I happen to get to watch the video as well from the, uh, Sheriff's Department and to you directly your honor um, you made a comment about peyote and how if we just smoke peyote we we would be having fun or something to that effect I need you to understand I said what? you said something about smoking Peyote. If we had peyote, we'd be having fun or something to that effect. It is at 36 minutes and nine seconds where you made that comment in that sheriff's camera. That, sir, whether you realize it or not, is very disrespectful to our culture. That is a sacred practice and it's not to be joked about. With that, I do appreciate all of your time. Thank you very much. Well, we have, or your group has, six more minutes. If somebody else likes speech. I would like How to. How you doing? It may take me a minute. That's all right. Ready, but I'm going to get there. That's all right. I had surgery yesterday. That's not good. But I'm here. And you could have spoke wherever you want to, ma'am. You didn't have to make it to that podium, but. Hey, Ryan? No, sir. Did you need anything from us? I apologize. I don't think Kelly's got some paperwork for you, too. Okay. But I was going to say, I didn't want you to have to wait for anything. That, sorry. Thank you, sir. You bet. Good morning. 
I'm Elizabeth Brodus. Um, I am part of the Toys for Tots. I work under Miss Judy, Julie Hale. One thing that I didn't hear anyone say, it was in the contract that there was no alcohol to be sold during our event. I don't believe I heard anyone say that. And I was the one that escorted the MC back in to speak with Julie and you, with the sheriff following me. When all of the officers showed up and swarmed, I was outside witnessing what was going on at the, the bar and all the allegations about the bottles and all that, I don't know where that came from. But what is breaking my heart is all those children and the families that came out to see this were petrified. See, my job with Toys for Tots is about the children and all the families that came out there with their children because, I, you know, those little red bags that say toys for tots. I made sure that every child out there got one. And to see the petrified faces on them children's face when all of this was going on. If you have children, you can just imagine what was going through them babies' heads. And I know y'all more than likely have children or grandchildren. And I appreciate everything you did, Miss Kelly. It was awesome. And like they said, 30 minutes was all we needed to close out. But I had never seen vendors clearing out of an event so fast in my lifetime. But I thank y'all for hearing us. And no, I should not be standing here at this minute. But I stand up for Toys for Tots because I do it every year. And is it a paid position? No. But we do it out of our heart for the children of our counties, even the counties that we don't cover. And I thank y'all for listening to us. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, there's still like two and a half minutes there. If somebody else has something they want to say quickly for that side. I'm just going to address uh, from here. My name is Sylvia Flores, and um, I just want to say that um, I was at the powwow. My family and I uh, went. Um, they had invited us earlier on, and one of my daughters was actually working one of the booths for kids face painting and whatnot. But I want to say that we got there about 4.35 and everything was going great. We were enjoying the festivities, you know, we were enjoying the dances, we were enjoying the, the comedy, you know, that was going on, you know, the, um, and when it was first addressed about the alcohol, I want to say that um, the first time that it was uh, brought forth, it was announced from the podium, it was announced from the stage you know, in a manner that it was said, made clear, hey, can we put that alcohol away? Can y'all please put it away? And anybody, and I believe that at first he was addressing not only the circle, but the attendees of the powwow to say, hey, you know, we're not gonna have that. And he made sure to be able to, to extend that to the audience to say, it says we're not having it. And it, you know, he, they went on to express why it wasn't going to be tolerated. After that, uh, they made more announcements, you know, while they went to try to um, resolve what was going on with the alcohol. They had to try to kill time before resuming the ceremony. And during that killing time, you know, the, like I said, they made a few other jokes. He gave uh, background on family, about movies, about things that they had been partaking in. Go watch this movie, blow, you know. Anyway, the second time it happened, 
he once again addressed it. And the second time, he was a little more stern. Still not ugly, but he was more stern because this time it was farther than just the circle and the audience that he was trying to get the attention of. And so that was twice already. And again, he stated that it was in the contract and he did tell the vendor, he, not that, I'm sorry, let me back up. He didn't say anything to the vendors because he did say to the vendors, it doesn't matter, y'all are free to stay and do whatever you want to, it's the circle. But he did say, if it doesn't stop, then we have to pick up and go. He did say that. The third time that it happened, he was much more stern and he did mean business and I cannot blame him because at that point they had already had to kill almost 30 minutes before they could even march the colors out with dignity and respect. And that should not have happened. They should not have had to put off and put off and put off the ceremony because of having to keep addressing the situation that was going on outside of the circle. That to me was the biggest disrespect of putting on and putting on, even after being educated on why it wasn't happening. Because the first time I can understand, okay, some folks don't understand what's actually going on here. If you're receptive to what's going on and you were there with a purpose and you wanted to go for the entertainment, whatever, leave. Okay? And I think some people did. But the ones that chose to stay were going to stay in sacred ceremony. And I believe that he made very sure that it was not one time, not twice, but three times an opportunity to get that alcohol out of there. 30 minutes. That's all it was. They did. They pushed it back from 8 to 7 and from 7 to 6. They were in a hurry to get those colors out of the circle, even at that, to be able to get the last few pieces of the ceremony in, and it didn't happen. And I would like to ask one thing, please. Um, I need you to understand that we don't go into your churches drinking. Exactly. And, and that, that is the equivalent of what happens. And that was expressed. It was expressed, not on one occasion, but on many occasions. So you may not understand what you mean by the colors. Okay, so just like, you know, we would want to pick up our veterans and march the flag out, the, the American flag, the Texas flag, and whatever else you're representing, they have the same rituals. So first and foremost, I want to say that they honor the USA by marching the U.S. flag out. They also honor the USA by taking veterans, by inviting the veterans first. Not just Native veteran, uh, veterans for that matter. They weren't just exclusive to the Native tribes that were there. They were inclusive of even people that had not, you know, even touched a tribal ground anywhere for that matter. So they also invited them, and so those colors had to be marched out at a certain time, and it was getting pretty late for them, and they were crunching, and that should not have happened. If the, if control had been taken the very first time, it, we would have been out of there in a timely manner. If control had been taken the second time, yeah, you know, a few people may have been a little upset, but gain, but control would have been regained. The third time. I mean, that was it, you know, he, they, and, and if, if he, I, I mean, I don't quite understand it all either, but um, the tribal nations are a very, very serious group, you know, when they love, they love hard, but whenever you cross them, you know, it, it's kind of, it takes a lot to be able to gain that trust back, and that's from personal experience that I've had um, with them, and being a foster parent to the tribal nations. So um, in closing, I just want to say that even after all that was said, it could have just stayed there. The Sheriff's Department could have taken care of it. But no, because the, the thing that happened the following day was the most despicable thing that I could have seen. And um, fortunately, we have social media that presents every little thing that you do to the entire world. But... This restraint could have been held. And I don't know Cindy Gray from anybody, and I didn't know her that night, and I don't know her now. But I will tell you that when she posted that very degrading post on her social media about her and this girl taking on the natives, that was just uncalled for. And I believe that that in itself should be caused for people to open their eyes and to get something done about it because that re 
represented our entire community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It seriously did because we don't all think that way, but because she was in charge that night, and I know she said Kelly Harris this and Kelly Harris that, but no, because she was the responsible party at the time. She could have very well taken control of the situation and ended it the very first moment that it was asked. And so I'm, I'm just here to say that I'm ashamed, I'm embarrassed, and I'm very upset at the situation that happened while we were there because, like I said, um, this is Glen Rose, and we don't act that way. We don't act that way. And don't even get me started. I know you, it's a good thing I don't have time because I would so get started on the, the, the videos that came out. I'm ashamed of our sheriff's department, number one, because I collaborate with Crime Stoppers in Somerville County, and we're not out there on some Hollywood camera using the F-bomb here and the F-bomb there. It wasn't just, you know, and I could see how it's so easy for people to accept that nowadays. It really is. Coming from everybody, from, from Cindy Gray herself to our sheriff's department on those, on those uh, body cams. I'm ashamed because, you know what, we can get our point across without having to use curse words, especially in a professional environment. Everybody on those cameras, on our sheriff's department, used it so freely just to communicate with each other, and that's just not the way that it should be. And I'll be quiet now, and I'll sit down. <laughs> Thank you, man. All right. Well, we'll stop the timer on that one. And Sabrina, we'll start it for you and Aaron. I don't know Aaron. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I don't know who all is speaking for. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I wasn't going to say anything. <coughs> Jeff, listen to everybody. I decided to say a little something. Now, I can't bring you the pictures because no one was willing to give me the pictures. And Cindy Gray is married to my cousin. Would you state your name, please? I apologize. Crystal Gray. Okay. I, I should have known that, probably. <laughs> yeah. But I've been going to these powwows for years and years and years and meeting and speaking with Vic and all his group. And I have an ancestral grandmother that is native from Oklahoma. So I know what this stuff means and how serious I take it. And I agree with Sylvia down there. On that this particular day, Cindy was at Sexton during the middle of the day. And there are photos of her tipping back a lot. And I'm sorry, I can't, nobody was willing to give me these photos. But how she acted and has put a disgrace on my family's name. Like I said, I wasn't going to say anything. But hearing the passion and everything and what family means to me and what respect I have for these people and how Cindy has acted, representing my county too. I'm sorry, but I'm picking up and I'm sorry that I don't have a photo to bring you to show proof of her that day. Maybe enough there will be enough information for y'all that y'all might can. But I'm just sorry I had to say my piece. It's fine. Thank you. All right, Sabrina, now we'll, we'll restart it again. Let me reset. All right. And I don't know who all you have with you here. It's just so. going to be me for right now. So we were hired to do an event for the county. So when we found out there was some, some calendar invitation, there's a lot of going on. There was some calendar confusion. So we decided to put our events together. We worked very well to merge everything. We were supposed to be doing a Heritage and Hooch Festival, so we basically canceled all the hooch because it wasn't appropriate. We had a conversation. We took all the alcohol out of the situation during the day. The reason there was no security guard during the day is because there was no alcohol. We're not required to have one during the day, so the, he was sent home because there was no point in Buck standing there. <coughs> Buck was scheduled to come back at 6 o'clock when the bar was supposed to be open. Um, he was running late because he had some tummy issues. So he was getting his stuff together, and then he was heading back up there. Um, so... Let's also go back. So there was no contract. I'm not really sure what contract everyone keeps talking about. There was not one. So the Heritage Hooch Festival was ours. We were running it. And when they came to me and said they didn't have a place to have theirs and that they were scheduled at the same time, I was like, we can do this. Like, there's no reason why we can't fix this. Like, we can work together. 
So whenever they said they didn't have enough money to finish their event, I took $5,000 out of our budget and gave Vic and um, Julie money for their event so that they could continue to have it on because they didn't have enough money to finish and pay for everything. So the county gave them $5,000. We also let them use all of our equipment. The stage and stuff was supposed to be for our event. So I was like, yeah, y'all can use it. Why wouldn't you're standing there? It would be pointless to not share. So we gave them all of the sound equipment, everything they needed for their event, anything they wanted, we accommodated. I tried to do everything I could to make sure that their event went well and calmly and efficiently. Unfortunately, I had another event that I was already scheduled for, so my team was there. The bar was scheduled to go in at six. We had already predetermined that they were gonna end earlier just because we knew how long it could take and sometimes they overflow. So we'd already planned for six and the bar was scheduled to be set up. Um, I think everyone was, the attendance was low, so our bartenders had everything set up and ready to go much faster than normal, so they were ready to go. Um, I went back and looked at the alcohol sales. The purchases that were made were from vendors and people at the powwow. So I don't know how we handle that situation or address the facts. I don't know what we do about the purchases. I have the names of everyone that purchased. They were vendors, um, and I have their names. We can submit those names. I don't want to put everyone out on, but I have the name. I have every transaction. I can send them over. Um, there weren't really anyone in attendance for the concert yet because no one had gotten there yet because it wasn't scheduled for another hour. So it doesn't, I don't want to blame anyone. I just don't know who purchased alcohol. I can tell you what the credit card receipts tell me and what they did with it. So um, I will say this, the events of what my bartenders and staff went through, I had, I had two girls call me hysterical because two men had cornered Kiana in the parking lot and were screaming in her face, telling her how disrespectful she was. She was called the N word. The, the MC on the microphone got on the microphone and asked out loud, how would you feel if we brought fried chicken to your Kwanzaa? That is so wildly inappropriate. It wasn't? It didn't happen? Wait a minute now. Okay. Hey, I didn't they talk were, to you guys hey talking. wait a minute. They were respectful to you. You'd so, be respectful to them. When I have every one of the staff members calling me saying that their people are not letting their leave, they're screaming at them, they're concerned. They're, they, the bartender straight up called me and told me that they threatened to smash everything. He's like, you don't want to turn, shut it down, we'll come smash everything behind your bar. So I think everyone's stories, and I know that you guys were on the, the, at the thing talking, so you didn't get to hear all this and see all this, but this is what's coming from whoever was told to go out in there and tell them what they felt, they did. And they scared the crap out of my entire staff. So when I have people calling me hysterical, like, I don't want to be here, I don't want to stay here, I, wanna, I'm leaving. I don't get paid enough to be, to be in the middle of this drama. So they're all packing their stuff and leaving. They're like, they didn't want to stay. So even if we wanted to have bartenders, we couldn't because they were, none of them were staying after that. Because you have to think, I had two black bartenders and an Hispanic bartender. So they're like, what, am I, what do we do? And I'm like, just get your stuff and go. So they're calling me. So when I have people calling me, telling me that Kiana's cornered in a parking lot, two men are screaming in her face, the bartender's having to fight off guys who are telling them they're gonna smash stuff and take all their stuff. When, you know, they, they didn't know, they, also, they're just part they don't understand anything that's going on. They're not even from Glen Rose. They're from the city. They just came in to do a job. They have no clue what's going on. They don't understand any of the cultural background behind anything they're doing. They're just setting up a bar to sell beer. Does that make sense? So I think, you know, when they were asked to serve early, they were like, yeah, sure. To them, they didn't understand. So when they came and shut it down and they had the conversation with Kiana and Vic and they both told me the same thing, Kiana shut them down and was like, no more. So they didn't sell anymore after Vic told them not to and then everything was fine and then everything just, it just, everybody was talking trash to everything. The stories I've heard are not calm. <laughs> it was insane. And I, have, I also have first-hand accounts from everyone calling me, freaking out hysterically, like, what do we do? We've never been in this situation. We don't understand. We don't know how to handle it. So we basically just shut it down. The best way to do that is to end the conversation. So I, like I said, there's so many stories. The social media that I've seen, people making comments is disgusting. You're blaming people for things that they had no control or weren't even there. And you can't have possibly been at the bar and on the stage and in the, and in the parking lot all at the same time. So I know not everyone saw everything that they said that they did. And so it's just very frustrating to have to be trashed on social media and have people calling and threatening my business, threatening the catering business, make, giving them bad reviews, like they didn't do anything wrong. And so there's other people that are affected by this too because the social media has gotten clearly way out of control. Um, like I said, you know, we gave them money, they, you know, it, there's been so many things behind the scenes that led to this and this was such a calm planning for it to end this way. I, my, my, I cannot wrap my head around how it turned into this so wildly inappropriate situation. But I don't think that, there was a lot of trash talking um, coming from a lot of different places and a lot of horrible things were said. And so I don't know, you know who gets to be held accountable for just trash talking people and making them feel less than, but Kiana wouldn't even come here today because she said she'll never come back to Leonard's again. She's, I mean, she was like, I'm not gonna put myself through that. So I don't really know, like I said, I can't account and I can't tell you what everybody said, but I will say this. 
I don't know how the MC was told that there was alcohol, and he was also told on the microphone, and we have witnesses from several people from Julie to go up there and say something. And she's like, you need to go up there and say something now, say something now. As a person who runs an event, my job is to de-escalate situations. So if there was an alcohol situation, the first thing I would not do was go screaming on a microphone and get every single person riled up. My first thing is to go to the bartender like Vic did, shut it down, and clear the situation out. But that's not what happened. It just kept getting escalated and they kept, you need to say this and you need to say that and you need to go up there and tell them what they need to say. They need to say something. I understand that, but that's not how we work when we're professionals and we have professional behavior. Professionally, we de-escalate situations. We don't continue to push people to keep talking. And I think that's also what happened here too, is that the people who were organizing this didn't do their job as far as de-escalating the situation. And I think that's what kept pushing everyone just rallied it up instead of saying, hey guys, we've, we've got this under control. And when you give someone a microphone and they keep making comments and they say stuff, people are gonna listen. And so our goal is, as professionals, is to not do that. So I think we was handled poorly on a couple of different situations. Um, this should not have been this way. We worked so hard to make sure that you guys had a good event. I mean, we gave money. I did everything I could to possibly help the situation. And it feels like no matter what we did, we're good and trash talked. And it doesn't, it's, it's not fair to anyone who was there. Everyone was there just to do something for the county. And you know, we, like I said, we accommodated as much as we possibly could, gave everything that we could. And it, it doesn't matter, it's not enough. It's, we're still, everyone's trashing my business online putting my name out there. And yes, I did call 911 because I called him and I said, what do I do when I have people screaming in faces? He's like, well, I can't get there, just call 911. And so the officer told me, he's like, I'm sorry, I'm running late, I'll be there. I said, well, I need you to get there now. And he said, I'm getting there as fast as I can. He goes, just call 911. It's the best way to do it, to get an officer out there. I said, you got it. So, I mean, that's what I have to say right there. I mean, we do, like I said, there's so many people who've given so many statements. Most of them are not coming out here. Most of them will probably never come ever again. So. Was there, was there a scheduled time for the Six o'clock. So we six. had so we'd gone back and but forth on time. But the concert times. wasn't going to be till eight. Mm -hmm. Seven. So we moved everything up to seven because it was getting so late. Because we had already originally because eight was too late, and so we had to be out there by ten. So they were doing seven to ten. So we had changed. Like I said, that it had been such a hard planning process in the beginning. We had tried so many different ways. They were planning an event. We were planning an event. We didn't realize at the same time. So we merged them together. So everything fluidly changed constantly. We did the best we could, and she had a timeline, and then we merged our timeline. She didn't change any of her print timelines because we were verbally going back and forth and changing it the whole time. So everyone was trying really hard to work together so that nothing like this, I could not have ever imagined this, to be honest. And what did the flyer say? When was the concert going to start? At 7. The, the flyer yeah. said that? Yes. So, we went, well, they, so she made her own flyer separate from our events. So you have to remember, all of this stuff is separate. So her flyer doesn't, didn't have reflect on ours. And I want to say this, they keep saying this is a no alcohol and no drug free event. The, the expo itself has its own liquor license. <coughs> they knew that from the beginning we had this, me and Julie had a long conversation about it. She's like, that's totally fine. I was like, there's another event going on. They'll sell alcohol over there. That's, it's their venue. We can't tell them what they can and can't do. And we had no contract. So let's be real clear. None of us had a contract for that venue period. So we weren't able to make any rules or regulations because it's not our contract. So, um, like, like I said, on the alcohol stuff, on the flyer it said no drugs and alcohol. Clearly it means you can't bring that stuff in because we don't sell drugs. So it's not like, it doesn't make sense for you to be like, well, that's only one portion. Well, it said no drug and alcohol because that, for that reason, for the whole event, they didn't want it inside their event, which is understandable. And everyone respected that, I think. And the alcohol sales were outside. I just, I don't, I don't know how the, the crossover became such a situation with the screaming and the yelling and the microphoning and all that. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't know how it escalated that quickly, but... We were very clear, everyone was trying really hard to work on it. If the bartenders opened up and sold to people, they didn't, he didn't know, he's like, I didn't know. And I was like, it's okay, as long as we're, as you know, Kiana called us, as long as it's shut down now, we're good. But it just seems like the trash talking just kept and it just one person got fired and then everyone got fired and it just kept going on and on and on. Anybody else for your group, Sabrina? Um, no, Aaron. I brought Aaron. Aaron was kind of standing in the background witnessing like all the people running back and forth and starting their own little circles. It's like, you know, you need to go tell them this or you need to say this and you need to do that. So it's everyone pushing everybody to escalate when we should have de-escalated de and calmed everyone down, taking the right people out. There shouldn't, I can't speak to the other situation. I have no control or comments on that. Um, but m I know my team was trying really hard to make sure that they did what Vic and Julie wanted because it, they I did consider them my friends like it was this I just it we didn't want this to happen for anybody so um, I hate to interrupt but I I, I, I totally agree on what she said we had it worked out we did we had it worked out the timelines 
and the uh, 10 to 8 on my flyer, that was before we even got together, so the, the, it was already uh, printed. It was already out in print, but we had verbally decided when I got there that Saturday morning, I had went to my MC and said, look, we're going to back it off already because I know her uh, concert is starting uh, 7 or 8, so let's get turnover time, right? So we had... That was already. We, we were worked out. We were whole, working it out. We were fine. So like, we have no issues. Again, we didn't have what, any. What Sabrina? I think what Sabrina's saying is that she's not responsible for what happened in social media or anybody else. She's got no control. That just like I didn't have no control over visitors that came to the pile up. I mean, we had a great event. We had. I think uh, an unofficial count was anywhere from two to four hundred that had gone through there. <clears throat> so we had a great event. But again, when all that started. I, she has no control. I have no control. I mean, whatever they do, they do. I mean, just like some people go to store, they were rob a store. I have no control over it. I mean, we have no control over social media. We have no control over what visitors are going to act and do. So I think that was that's where the miss is at, you know. But uh, I agree. We had it. It was there. This should not have happened. And just so everybody knows, it wasn't here involved a week before, was it? Mm -hmm. That this court sat here with both groups. We had we we did worked our we did. together fighting to make this event happen. We it's had just... two that looked like they were sick as a dog. <laughs> yeah. They kept running in and out, working. I mean. Everyone worked so hard for this so community to have this. It. This it really court was. spent, I don't know how long, with both groups to get this, hopefully, yep. And I know it doesn't matter now, but I figured the people that wasn't involved in all that it, might want yeah. to know that it... It was a group effort for the county to work really hard because we wanted this to happen. This is such a cool thing, and it's not something you get to see all the time. So our goal was, I'm like, this is amazing. We have People have to be able to see this. And, you know, with our event, it was we didn't need it as much as we needed this. So we don't mind taking it away from our event to give yours. And so the, it, it wasn't, there was no animosity towards the event. It's just, I don't, this situation is insane. Like, it's not, it should have never happened. And they weren't the only two events in the expo. There was another event in the expo that she was selling alcohol for in the main arena. Yeah, so there was a yeah, whole other event. That's a whole other event. But that's a whole other event where people were also walking around with beer to interact in this whole situation. So they all co together. Correct. Yeah. Sadly, Correct. And so that's like, where, it, I want to say this. But there but were cool. only, like, three mm -hmm. sales made of alcohol before they shut it down, and then they shut it down. So anything, that, and that's the other thing, thank anything you for making that, that point. They Any alcohol they saw from came from another event on the other there. side because it was people that saw what was going on and wanted to come over and see. And they don't understand, obviously, that they couldn't take their their alcohol in the same building. So there's a bunch of people, and there were signs that says no alcohol on this one, but it's one building. So there's no separation in a building that has a liquor license. So I think that's where the confusion lies. No one on our side meant any harm. The bartenders have no clue what was going on. They just they didn't even know what they were coming to. To be honest with you, they know they have a gig from this time, this time, and what city to be in to wear their outfit. So to put it on those guys and that poor kid, they they called him some names. There were a couple gentlemen. I don't know who they were, and I they know they don't speak for everyone. But went after them with such a fierce mouth, and. When Kiana calls me, and she's one of the toughest women I've ever met, if you know her, she is iron. When she calls me and her voice is shaking like this, it breaks my heart. Because she was like, I just don't even know what to say. And I was like, I'm so sorry. She's like, no one should ever feel like this. And I was like, you're right. She was, I was literally doing my job. And I was like, absolutely you were. So then I feel responsible for these people that I put into a situation where it should have been very simple. And so no one meant any harm with the alcohol. And like I said, they just didn't understand. And it, being uneducated is not, you know, an excuse. However, in this situation, they didn't know. And so, that's all I have to say about that, I guess. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Aaron, did you want to say anything? Like I said, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. You're too big for that. <laughs> Kelly, did you want to wrap things up? And then we'll take a quick break before we actually go into executive session. I think a restroom break is probably going to be in order. A bunch of old men. Really <laughs> You're not an old man. Okay, first off, Vic and I have put on four powwows in the, in the last four years. I am very respectful for the Native American culture. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even go out in the circle. I'll, I'll go out to give money, but I have to ask Vic, how do I go out there? You know, and he tells me you have to go behind you know, the elders, and you can drop the money in there. So I respect their culture. Uh, matter of fact, I've been adopted by some of the families in there. And so we have never had an issue 
with a powwow here in Glen Rose or Somerville County. Now, the reason why it was incorporated with the heritage and Hooch Festival is because we have a Native American history in our heritage here in Glen Rose. There are lots of connections of places where the Native Americans have, you know, uh, protected areas here that some people don't know about but uh, that was a part that was the reason why we brought that in this was a county event the Expo Center is a county uh, facility so there was not a contract with Vic to have the event there I was the event producer I hired Perfect Planning, Sabrina and Aaron to bring in sound, equipment, bands, food trucks, uh, bar, whatever else needed. They understood uh, that we could not sell alcohol during that. For one reason, that's why we set it up outside of the building so it wasn't even in the building. Um, I had spoken to Wade a couple of times couple of days before when we were getting this set up because Cindy would not stay out of that side she I'll just say I had there was no help whatsoever from any expo employees in trying to set up that event they were sp specifically told not to do anything not lift a finger for that event therefore Vic and Sabrina and Aaron, they all had groups of people come in to help break down, you know, stalls and stuff. We had to call Road and Bridge in to come and roll the, the arena flat so that it could be done. While they were doing that, Cindy came out and stopped that. I called Wade because I, I was fed up with every time I turned around, she was out there halting things, causing issues with the problem. You know, I've worked with Cindy, and I don't, I don't have problems with her except the fact that she did not want that event there she did not want me there she wanted control over the whole thing Wade even talked to her Wade and Jeff came up there at one point and you know to check on why progress had stopped on rolling out the arena um, she was told to stay with her event the UCR that was on the other side the day of I, I can I can attest to what Kelly is saying because even when Sabrina and I when we was in here coming to court first after that this woman this lady Cindy this young lady Cindy made it she kept throwing obstacles in front of us you can't roll that dirt that way you can't do this you can't break down the stalls you can't Mr. Bush your help was really valuable and getting a lot of stuff done with your road uh, bridge and road crew they the one they're the ones who made it happen like kelly said none of the expo employees because they was told i, I talked to two employees they said we can't help you big i mean we was told if we help you we're gonna get fired you know they, they got a job too so i said hey don't get yourself in trouble i'll figure it out we'll figure it out so she, obstacle after obstacle after obstacle after obstacle kelly was over there fighting for us to make it happen, but just obstacle after obstacle. So I'm sorry, Kelly. That's all right. There were a lot of complaints about having, saying that we shouldn't have had two events going on at the same time. The Somerville County Expo is a multifunction facility. It could hold three to four events at the same time. There is no reason why it can't. That's the only way it's going to ever make money if you hold more than one event at a time in that building. Uh, we worked with her. We, we put vendors back to cut off the back area where the horse stalls are so that, you know, people wouldn't come through, you know, unless they came in the other way and learned, you know, what the rules were. Uh, Sabrina got all of the permits for alcohol served outside of the building because it was not inside. It was not the county's permits. It was on her. Um, This was part of our heritage, but it wasn't the only part that we were showing. We also had the Creation Evidence Museum in the exhibit hall that had blue from Jurassic Park for the kids to see and take their pictures with. We also had the animatronics dinosaur from Dinosaur Valley State Park that Julie brought out to put up in there inside the arena 
that the kids were having, everybody was having a blast with. We had Bussy there with all his fossils, and he was giving demonstrations on how to, you know, clean a fossil, or look what to look for to find your own. So this was all incorporated into one event. We also had music. We lost $7,500 for the band that was there that night. Um, as everybody was evacuating, there were people trying to come to the concert. And they got turned away, too. Um, we hired Perfect Planning to help me because, you know, I'm basically a one-person team now <laughs> besides the county helping and uh, so Sabrina and Aaron helped uh, they did a great job the powwow had sound that was probably better than it needed to be at this particular event you know um, but it had sound it had a stage it, it was it was set up perfectly and people were having a great time um, so this was the problem that we tried to avoid um, the powwow was our main daytime function yes the bar was going to be opened at six they need a little bit of time to set up prior but they were outside so you know once the powwow was over it was supposed to start then unfortunately as Sabrina said younger people working in there weren't aware of that and they stopped you know after I guess they only sold three drinks and they stopped uh, my understanding is some of the uh, ultimate calf roping uh, cowboys came over with their bottles of beer that they had purchased inside the expo, uh, which was selling alcohol. So that was a disrespect that they were coming in from the other side. You know, it was great that they want to come over and see it, but they also needed to respect the boundaries when you come inside that portion of the building. Um, The county unfortunately lost money on this because we had to cancel an event, the band. We still had to pay them. We still, you know, had paid Aaron for the stage and the sound and everything. Uh, we paid Sabrina for bringing in her food truck, um, her employees to help kind of make things run smoothly. We paid the powwow money to come. Uh, I believe y'all also got the vendor money, didn't you? So they got all the vendor money off of this. Um, I just, I had left, I had been there all day since before about 8.45, I'd been there all day. I left at 5.15 to go and grab me a bite to eat because I'd already eaten at the food truck earlier. So I just wanted something a little different. I wasn't gone 15 minutes before my phone started blowing up. And like Vic said, it was within a short amount of time that chaos, you know, uh, ascended. Um, we drove right back, and it was a peaceful exit, but I've <coughs> never seen people move out as fast as what they did from, you know, me just pulling up. It was a total disrespect, and I apologize to the Indian Nation for the disrespect of someone who knows better, who should know better. Her son is half Indian, so she should know uh, the sacredness of the facility and of the sacred circle. Um, I will say that I know there are people in here that will be very happy that this is my last event. Um, this event could have been a great thing. Uh, but as far as a contract with the county, this was my event. This was a county event. Yes, I brought in Vic because he could help bring in the Indian Nation. I brought in Sabrina because she could help bring in the bands and Aaron to bring in the sound and stuff like that. We paid for that. But for one person that was asked to stay away, that was there most all the day taking pictures and videos. I never saw her go to the other side. She stayed on my side of the building the entire day. And then it ended up a disaster. And of course, 
It's my event. I get blamed. I will take the blame, but I will say that this should be another eye opener for the commissioners on what a detriment one employee can be for the county. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. All right, I think this group needs a break before we go in executive session. So, Michelle, let's say, what, 10.56 a.m.? We will take a break and then retire into executive session. And we'll get a hold of you when we come out of executive session. Thank you very much. And we'll go again. All right, it is 12.02 p.m. on Tuesday, November the 12th. We'll bring this, uh, we'll resume back into regular session of Assembly County Commissioners Court. And there is action to be taken, so I believe I have a motion that wants to be made. Who would like to make the motion? I'll make that motion. that we uh, terminate Cindy Gray as our operator of the expo? I have a motion by Wade. Do I have a second? second. I have a second by Richard. Any further questions or comments? All in favor said motion. That's by far, zero against. And do I have motion to adjourn? I make that motion. I have a motion by Tammy. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Jeff. All in favor to adjourn at 12.03. That's by far, zero against. I'll be right with you. Give me just long enough to sign this paperwork. I'll be there. Michelle, you can have That's true. That's all right.